Um, it's a little surreal. Actually, when we pulled up, uh, there was like a heart flutter when we pulled into the driveway up front, which I guess, I don't know, maybe it's him saying, hey, this is where it all began. So. We're here at the Hankins farm. This is where my second great grandfather was a slave. I can't evaluate what he went through. But I can only use my imagination. My name is Edward Radcliffe, and I'm a gunnery sergeant in the United States Marine Corps. And I am Damon Radcliffe, sergeant with the York Coast and Sheriff's Office. And we are the great great grandsons of Edward Radcliffe, Medal of Honor recipient, Civil War. So this is Deep Bottom, one of the main Union crossing points over the James River. And Edward Radcliffe... I'm standing here at New Market Heights Battlefield, where 14 United States Colored Troops received the Congressional Medal of Honor. My name is Melvin Morris. I'm a Congressional Medal of Honor recipient. I wish I could have been here on this hallowed ground and been part of this fight because I'm a soldier. And I feel like I could have been doing my part, especially with the colored troops. As the Union armies moved throughout the South during the course of the American Civil War, they came as instruments of freedom for the many slaves living on the plantations and on the farms. Edward Radcliffe, he was here until age 29 when he left the farm, walked to Yorktown and joined the Union Army. He would enlist in January 1864. He joins the uh, Union Army. Yeah, he could have run away, but he could've, joins could've, the Union Army. Could have went anywhere. Yeah. But why would he join the Union Army after he got his freedom? The Emancipation Proclamation changes the trajectory of the American Civil War. It is no longer just a war to restore the Union, but a war to end slavery. And part of the Emancipation Proclamation is to enlist black soldiers into the Union Army. And thus we have the creation of the United States Colored Troops. New Market Heights is a critical moment in the history of the United States Colored Troops. They would finally be given an opportunity to spearhead an attack on an important Confederate position and prove their worth as soldiers. They only thought that the Colored Troops were good for servitude, not for battle. And this battle proves them wrong. So I was looking at some information on your great-great-grandfather the other day. I found that shortly after he enlisted, he was promoted to first sergeant within a month after his enlistment, which tells me that he probably was recognized by not only his peers, but his superiors with having some type of leadership ability. Right. And for his So he was outstanding soldier to begin with. Yes. Very good. The Federals' plan for a two-pronged offensive north of the James River in the hopes of capturing the Confederate capital at Richmond. One column will move out from Deep Bottom along the James River to New Market Heights. Another column will land at Aiken's Landing, move up to Fort Harrison. The two columns will hopefully combine for the final drive on Richmond. We're here at Deep Bottom on the James River. We're on the night of September 29th, 1864. The United States Colored Troops Division will land. Among them is First Sergeant Edward Radcliffe of the 38th United States Colored Troops. They spread out here in this little bowl that we're standing in. Mm -hmm. And I would say a rather tense several hours. When you get ready to go into combat and you get ready to cross what they call a line of departure, yeah. you're sitting there waiting. Your adrenaline is, is, is way out of the ballpark. And many of these men have not seen combat before. You know you're going in it. There's no turn around. This is it. The unknown. 
Couldn't imagine. Couldn't imagine what any of the men were going through, uh, let alone um, an ancestor of mine. There's a heavy fog that morning. Right around 5 a.m., the attack gets underway. The USCTs make their first assault. Wouldn't they be left out for dead because of their positioning? They're sitting ducks. Four Mile Creek is a natural fortification for the Confederates. The Confederates know that any Union attacks coming will have to navigate these steep banks through these ravines and get across this creek, where, of course, they'll have to reform again on the other side. They're taking Confederate artillery fire from two directions, rounds that are designed to explode overhead and rain shrapnel down into the troops waiting below. Edward and his men get pinned down here in this ravine for roughly about 30 minutes. It's probably here that Edward is going to lose his commanding officer. You're always taught in the infantry. You got a chain of command. In the event that my lieutenant goes down, then it falls on me. Somebody go down, you step, you take his place. And that's what I had to do. It's no different than what Edward did at Newmarket Heights when his officer went down. He knows that his men cannot stay here under that Confederate artillery fire. So he decides to lead them forward. They push through slashing the trees with sharpened branches into what is known as a chevaux de frise, modern barbed wire, if you will, but they keep going. He knew he could have been killed, he knew his men could have been killed, but he still pressed on. It's gonna take them roughly about three hours to get up on top of Newmarket Heights. He did not let the command structure break down. He took charge kept the troops moving until they reached the works of the enemy. You know from his Medal of Honor citation that your ancestor, your great-great-grandfather, is the first enlisted man over the Confederate works. Edward Radcliffe's Medal of Honor citation reads, commanded and gallantly led his company after, after the commanding officer had been killed was first enlisted was man. the first enlisted man to enter the enemy works being here being the hollow ground that it is you know knowing that edward traversed through this very path it's 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 almost unimaginable without without this being here I don't know if not a lot of other black families know about their Civil War ancestry. A lot of them would feel that sense of pride that we feel when they come to find out that their relative played a significant part in our nation's history. It just shows that what one can come from, he came from being a slave to become a Medal of Honor recipient. And, you know, leading generations of other Radcliffe's into service. His whole family was doing the same thing that he did. They're not selfish, and they sacrifice. They're patriots, and that's what he was. He wanted freedom for all. He had a dream of about the new country, the new United States. And so that was his legacy. That was, and it's being carried forward. I sure hope you would be proud of what we're doing and what we continue to do. And uh, keep the Radcliffe name strong.